In this southern corner of the Netherlands, a grey November day looks like the last place you would expect to see a revolution in food. But in these vast greenhouses, things are happening that could change lives half a world away. Usually, it takes huge amounts of water to grow tomatoes. But here, they've reduced it to virtually nothing, and they even grow the fruit in insulation material rather than soil. We use only rainwater and uh, recycled water. And you can do this with any vegetable? Um, yeah, you can. It can be a solution uh, to, to bring fee, uh, food into uh, other places in the world where there's a problem now. The tiny Netherlands is already the world's largest exporter of tomatoes. This, though, has an application not for Western supermarkets, but for the world's hungry. What they're onto here is regarded as really exciting because if you can grow vegetables with no soil and with almost no water, then you can grow them anywhere. You can grow them in the desert or where there's been drought. And so there's a growing realization that this technology could be used to fight famine. The combination of population growth and climate change are making a terrible situation in parts of the world even worse. And desertification of agricultural land is turning many into climate refugees. At this leading university, they're finding yet more radical solutions, like extracting the bacteria from plants which can cope in the deserts and putting them into crops. Incredibly, the scientists believe the deserts of the world are a huge agricultural opportunity. They think they're two years away from planting crops in the sand. Lettuce, cabbage, tomato, and that are uh, potato we are working on as well. So it's really a broad. Uh, if, if we come to barley, then it is uh, it's a very close relative of wheat. Uh, then we have we talk here about major crops also that, uh, that you can grow in the deserts in the future. That we can grow under such harsh conditions, also in desert areas. Yeah. The message here to Western politicians is that climate change is an integral part of the refugee crisis and offering solutions has benefits everywhere. If we don't solve the problems over there, then people will migrate to, uh, to other places and they will look for uh, food in Europe. And, and we know that, again, uh, migration is a great problem at the moment. So, in my opinion, we need to improve the situation in Africa uh, and to uh, improve the, the livelihoods of people in Africa. There's often a feeling that trying to help the world's hungry is pointless and the problems will never end. But here there is proof that even climate change can be beaten by science. For the politicians of the rich countries, it is becoming possible to effect incredible change, if they really want to. In the United States, copyright law allows for the fair use of copyrighted material under certain limited circumstances without requiring permission from the owner. Under the law, determinations of fair use take into account the purpose of the use, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and substantiality of the work used in relation to the work as a whole, and the effect of the use upon the potential market for the copyrighted work. Other jurisdictions may have similar copyright provisions protecting fair use or fair dealing. If you are uncertain as to whether a specific use qualifies as a fair use, you should consult a qualified copyright attorney. You have the right to take it down.